this episode of The Silburn Show, the Solution-Oriented Summit, creating a platform for effective discourse, seeking solutions and impacting actions, tackling knife and gun crime in our community. Let it not be our legacy. With your host, Silburn Sidiel and Stefan Gislane. With Rachel Okello on Youths and Deportation. Rachel Okello, now there's something else that when some of these boys are arrested and they are gone to prison, they leave prison and they believe that they are going to go straight into the street. But they get deported because their papers weren't really straight. So Rachel O'Culler, who is a solicitor and deals a lot with deportation and also on the Windrush, um, she's going to come and speak briefly as to her role in this particular maze. Yes? Miss Rachel O'Culler, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining Hello. us all the way from Birmingham. <laughs> yes. Broom, right, broom. Yeah. Okay. I was in London as well. You're in another, in central London. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> oh, careful, Rachel. Okay. Yeah. So, so, Rachel, we had earlier a Mr. Stephen Akinson as a barrister. He was talking about what happened when young boys, or young girls, are perpetrators and they go to prison and the whole judicial system. But well, you're talking now about the whole judicial system with them when they actually um, finish their criminal sentence. And we're live stream as well, so if you yeah. can. So hello everybody, it's lovely to be here. My name is Rachel O'Kello and I'm a solicitor based in Birmingham. I've been a solicitor since 2002 and I started my practice in 2007 and I devoted 98% to immigration. So just one second, if you want to come inside, please come inside. Um, you can come straight to the back. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to come inside. Um, okay. So, yes, yeah, so I started my practice in 2007 and 98% of that is devoted to immigration. Um, I help people a lot regularize their immigration status. That's my expertise, that's what I do. And I also help people who are going through deportation. And there are two types of deportation. There are, there's criminal deportation and there is uh, what we call administrative removal. So if somebody hasn't got their papers sorted out, they've overstayed their visa, then they can be administratively, administratively removed, which sometimes people say that is deportation, but it, it isn't in the very strict sense of the word. So what I'm gonna address today is criminal deportation. Um, and you've just heard Cheryl talking about how young people get into crime. And you've also heard about how young people serve their criminal sentences. So I come in really with deportation work at the very end of all that. So the young person has got into crime and then they've gone to prison. And many of the young people in our community and um, the Jamaican community in particular um, haven't sorted out their papers. So there are a lot of young people who came to the United Kingdom at a very young age from Jamaica with their parents and their parents never regularized their status, or they did, but they never actually made them become British, which is fair enough, not everybody um, wants to be British. You just may want to have indefinite leave to remain, and that is fine. But if this young person, and we hear today that it's very easy for young people to drift into a life of crime. So if this young person commits a criminal offense, or anybody who's not a British citizen commits a criminal offense and goes to prison for more than 12 months, then they are liable to be automatically deported from the United Kingdom. So an awful lot of our young people who get involved in criminality grow up in the country. Some of them are even born here, but they're not actually British because because of their immigration status, they're not British. Or they come here sometimes at age four, get involved in criminality around about age 15, 16, full British accent, they've gone to school here, they've grown up here, they look British, they sound British. They're integrated with their um, British friends, but they are not British. So if they commit a criminal offence, they and get a prison sentence of more than 12 months with their friends who are British, then their British friends will be released from prison. But the Jamaican person will then continue to be detained after their prison sentence in immigration detention so that they can then be deported from the United Kingdom. And a lot of young people don't actually realise that. And the result of that is that parents end up spending thousands and thousands of pounds on solicitor's fees trying to um, get their children to stay in the United Kingdom. You will be deported unless you can show that you have an exemption to deportation. 
But because I'm addressing young people today, a lot of them don't actually qualify for the exemptions because although they may have been here for many years, they don't actually have a family life. They don't have children here. They're not very established in the UK in the sense of if they were a lot older. And so they are highly likely to be deported. And equally, and, and it's very important what Cheryl was saying earlier when she was saying that a lot of the, which I didn't know actually, when they disappear, sometimes they're off maybe selling drugs somewhere because an awful lot of the young people I come across sell, they go to prison for firearms and class A drugs. And I'm thinking to myself, where on earth do these young people find firearms and class A drugs? I mean, you don't say it to them because you're the solicitor, but in my mind, I'm thinking, where are they finding these Class A drugs? So I'm a little bit enlightened, actually, today as to how this can happen and how easily it can happen. But if the child is, or the young person is not British, they're going to get a terrible shock. And I have some young people on the phone calling me up saying, they're taking me to the plane, they're going to deport me, they're going to deport me. Yes, they will. Our young people really need to know that the UK government, the Home Office, are very, very serious. They do not want repeat offenders. They do not want foreign national criminals. And a phrase is a foreign national Jamaican criminal. They don't want that here. So we need to be sure to tell the young people that the best way is to avoid criminality at all costs. If they go to prison for 12 months, it's automatic deportation. If they go to prison for over four years, they are possibly going to go back home. And the UK government, they don't care how long they've been here, they don't care if they were born here, from they're not British, and they go for more than four years, and Class A drugs, robberies, and firearms, which seem to be the offences of the day, will get you a sentence of more than four years. And those young people are highly likely to be deported. Back to, we're saying Jamaica, because we're here talking about Jamaica today, without their family members, because a lot of them, uh, the mothers will be here, may have remarried and fathers sometimes um, may not be in the picture and certainly they may not have any family members in Jamaica. So it's just to highlight that really. Um, you know, I could say make sure if your children are eligible to be British, make them British. But what I actually want to say, because obviously if they're British, they're not going to be subject to deportation proceedings. But what I want to get across today really is that these young people shouldn't be committing these offences. And if they do commit these offences, they are highly likely, if they're not British, to be deported. And the government will not stop until they get them out of the country. So the question, um, the question was to specify how we classify. Yeah, exactly. Because some of them say I'm British. No, unless you have been registered as a British citizen, and you can get a British passport, you're not British. So you will be British if, for example, you were born here to a British parent or a parent who had indefinite leave to remain. Or you came here and you served out your long residence period and then you registered or you naturalized as British. But unless you actually qualify for a British passport, you are not British. And don't forget that when you've committed that criminal offense, you're never gonna be British, even if you would have ordinarily qualified because then they won't let you be British because you've already committed a criminal offense. I'm talking about, about non-British citizens, yeah. So, for instance, if a child or a, a youth was born to um, immigrants, there was somebody emigrated from Jamaica, but they were born here. So would they be classified as being British? So British um, is different to really just immigration law. So you can be born here and not be British. And I have known people to be born here and be subject to deportation proceedings. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? I just want to say thank you for clearing that up because um, over the years I've worked with a number of people who have been deported back and some of the sad things that come out is parents are not having honest conversations with their children in terms of their status. So a lot of them come here when they were young, they're protected by the Children's Act, you know, but the parents don't realise that runs out you know, um, at the age of 18, and during that process, they should have been trying to sort out their children's citizenship. I'm very happy that you um, highlighted that anything over 12 months is an automatic AB, um, subject check. And most importantly, we need to have the conversations with our children that don't have a particular status. They need to know that what Johnny can do, you can't do. That's it. 
what Johnny can do, you can't Thanks. do. That's why I travelled all the way from one end of London to the other, because we really need to um, emphasise this, because it's happening. A lot of our young people are just disappearing. Because at the end of the day, you know, as a black person, we're black people here, we're Caribbean, um, we know that black young people are more likely to get harsher criminal sentences anyway. So from you go in front of the criminal justice system, you're likely to go to prison for more than 12 months, and sometimes more than four years. Rachel, um, I'm shifting slightly. You know, London seems to be the hub of the crime. But in Birmingham, what is it like in Birmingham with knife, knife and gun crime? It's the same. Um, the Birmingham, I mean, London's a bigger place. Um, and we hear more knife crime in um, London. But I live in um, just outside Birmingham in Sutton Coldfield, which is um, it's, it's like a white area. Yeah. yeah. But a young black boy was he wasn't from the area, but he was stabbed to death in the area in front of the kids there where you can imagine they were you know but so there's a lot of crime even in birmingham we're, we're facing those issues every day ourselves um, any more questions ladies and gentlemen very controversial but um birmingham johnson's and burger boys is it? are they still involved or are the youngest now doing the crime well, <laughs> I don't think she is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's one of those things that makes us wonder why they can't defeat knife crime, really, because certainly when the Johnsons and Burgers were at their peak in Birmingham and the police got fed up of them, they just kicked down everybody's door, arrested everybody. And for a long period, a lot of this sort of first generation, if you like, were in prison. In prison, killed, in hiding, you know. So they're not there now, but unfortunately, um, there seems to be a new wave of young people who have um, taken over. It's very, it, it can be quite violent there as well. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, without further ado, um, no, we're not finished. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. Have you got a question? You want, please. Okay, it's like a sort of immigration thing, yeah? Because I heard you said just now that like if, if a child is born of a, a parent, even British, I don't know if I get the story right, what you were saying. Because for example, I was born here, but I was grown in Jamaica from I was three years old, done all my schooling and everything. And I came back in 2000. Well, I met, well, my husband, he was my boyfriend then. And he came here on more than one occasion and we got married here in Brixton and he went back home. And I have been trying from 2004 to get him up that he can come and help me look after my son. And then during the process, this 18,000 threshold thing came in and I have, I have never earned 18,600 for the year. But I do know that if my husband had come to join me, my life would have been better and that of my son. My son is now 17 years old. And because of this immigration system, I am not only a lone parent, but my son has been a fatherless child. What does your organization have to do with that, about that? That's um, the last question. Yeah, Thanks. so the threshold is 18,600. Um, and last year, the Supreme Court upheld that that was um, lawful, even though the minimum wage, even if you worked full time, you wouldn't get 18,600. But what they did say is that other things can be taken into consideration. So if there are children, if there's disability, if there's exceptional circumstances, then they can take that into consideration. Okay. All right, well. Okay, well, thank you. And you can have a chat with Rachel after, if anything, uh, before she dashes to Birmingham. Um, I want to thank you so much, Rachel. Uh, you got to dash to Birmingham now, isn't it? Yes, I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> Might get some jerk chicken and then get go. Get some jerk chicken <laughs> along the way. Okay, um, well, thank you so much. And one of applause for Rachel Okello. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos share the videos and subscribe to the channel let people know about it but important thing is also to comment let us get your comment let's get your views so we can understand how to even please you better ladies and gentlemen so as i said share like subscribe ah thank you i saw you there you subscribe and you shared thank you so much see you next time